Hello, and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And I'm going to do a review of the British Grand Prix of 2022. Unfortunately, a bit late, because this weekend I climbed Snowdon with some friends. Stunningly beautiful, and if you're in Wales, you should totally do it. If I can drag my fat ass up that mountain, you can too. So that's your inspirational quote for the day. But there was also a Formula 1 race, which unfortunately I didn't get to watch till about midnight and I am very tired. I would like to go to bed, but I thought I'd do this first. So I did watch qualifying as well, and I don't have too much to say. It's a good performance from Nicholas Latifi, and obviously a fantastic one from Carlos Sainz. But I don't think there's any massive surprises, really. And so on to the race. Carlos Sainz on pole. Got a bit of a bad start, and Verstappen got the jump on him, but then absolute chaos ensued behind him with Guan Yu Zhou having a horrifying crash upside down over the barrier into the catch fencing. Very lucky he didn't get hurt and very lucky no one else got hurt. And, you know, five cars were damaged in that incident. Luckily the red flag came out so we got two of those actually managed to get in the race. But this was a hugely terrifying crash and it looked like it was just congestion on the start line. And I think Russell moved over slightly and caught Gasly. And he got turned into Joe. And I think Albon got hit by someone else trying to avoid it. But that meant we lost Albon, Joe, and George Russell. That is his first retirement of the year. He's finished in the top five at every race this year so far, which is a pretty damn good record. It was a shame it ended here, but that's the trouble when you qualify 8th, you're in that midfield. Anything can happen, especially at the start of a race. So we had a long break with a red flag. Obviously that gave a chance for a couple of cars to get fixed, namely Ocon and Sonoda, who both got damaged. I think hitting Albon, not getting involved with Russell and Joe. So I think they got, yeah, so I think got damaged in the uh, avoidance rather than the actual main crash. We got a restart, and it was a standing restart, and Science did much better this time. And we had a couple of like start. We had a safety car later as well, and that both of the starts, there was a lot of cars bumping into each other. It was quite a messy race, really. But we had Leclerc hit Perez, and Verstappen and Science, I think, made contact as well. Possibly Verstappen and Leclerc. But the outcome was Verstappen, oh, he didn't have damage yet, but he will have damage later. But it, Perez had damaged his front ring, as had Leclerc. Perez came in and pitted, Leclerc stayed out and had pretty decent pace. So it looked like things were going wrong for Red Bull there, except they were going to get worse. Norris actually got past Hamilton as well at the second start, which was... A blinder for him. He didn't stay in front long, but it's always nice to see Norris get those moments. Science led early on, and it looked like he was in control until he made a mistake and he ran wide. Verstappen got the lead, and then Verstappen just seemed to slow down. I think the first thought was it was a puncture, but actually he had some damage to his floor, and he just never recovered. He had no pace. And I actually, I think they said it was a piece of debris on the track or something that caused it. I don't actually have a clue. I wasn't really paying attention. But so this was a massive blow to his championship. It looked at this point like Ferrari's bad luck in Canada had turned around and now Red Bull were having the bad luck. But Verstappen was able to carry on. Unlike Bottas and Gasly, they both retired. Both good drivers who you kind of expect to get points at a race like this. Lewis Hamilton was starting to put pressure on the Ferraris when the pit stops happened. He ran long compared to Sainz and Leclerc and it looked like he was going to either be in the middle or very close to both of them but he had a slow stop that left him four seconds behind. Perez at this point was back up into fourth having made a very early stop and climbing his way back through the field with some good pace. Got ahead of Norris and Alonso in the pit stops and but he at this point he was on old tyres and he had to pit again and it looked like that could 
I mean, he's only going to drop a couple of places, but it's still not great. Luckily for him, Esteban Ocon broke down. We got a safety car. Perez got a cheeky pit stop, and he was on fresh tyres, as was Sainz and Hamilton. But not Leclerc. For some reason, Ferrari decided not to pit Charles Leclerc. And this cost him the race. That's not to say Carlos Sainz didn't deserve to win. He did a fantastic job today. But he did lack pace at points in this race, and Leclerc should have had this easy. So there may be shouting at the Ferrari motorhome after the race. But I think, on balance, I think Sainz really did deserve it. Leclerc, he'll feel hard done by. He's had a lot of bad luck this year. In fact, both Ferrari drivers have, and I'm glad Sainz has finally had his moment in the sun. But Leclerc, if he's going to be a top championship contender, then he needs to stop making mistakes, and Ferrari definitely needs to stop making these strategic mistakes. And so we had the safety car. Cars on fresh tyres, except Leclerc. And it was pretty chaotic. Sainz got Leclerc pretty much straight away. And Perez got past Hamilton pretty quick as well. But we then had a three-way fight between Perez, Leclerc and Hamilton. There was contact. Um, Perez and Leclerc ran each other wide. Hamilton got past both of them. Then they both got back past somehow. And it was pretty fantastic driving. I think Perez... I would probably say is driver of the day just because he had that bad piece of luck early in the race had to change his front wing and he managed to fight his way back up into second it's really an incredible drive um, Alonso did try and get past them ball as well but couldn't quite do it which I think shows the difference between the top running cars and the midfield cars at the end of the day the midfield cars just don't have the pace to overtake unless either something is wrong or strategy and yeah, it's luck mostly actually I think so that was how the race finished it was an epic battle between Hamilton, Leclerc and Perez towards the end as it was at the start of the race as well with Verstappen, Sainz and Leclerc and Sainz it was a good race from Silverstone chaotic very very chaotic and that first crash really did sort of set the scene I'm glad everyone's alright. I think Joe was cleared at the scene. I think Albon was taken to hospital for checks, but I've not heard anything, and I'm presuming he's alright. Um, they've only got a week to recover because obviously next week, well, this it is Monday technically now, so end of this week we're in Austria. There's too many races. It's honestly, I feel like I've watched endless Formula One. Like, it feels like every weekend there's a Formula One race. It's far too many. It's not special anymore. Like, I remember getting excited for Grand Prix weekend. But when you have it so often... And I know we've got like a three week break after this one, I think. Two or three weeks. Can't remember. It still feels like a lot of Grand Prix. Like we're 11... Like Austria's the 11th round. And that's the halfway point. And we've still got another 11 after it. This way too many. Uh, Sainz, of course, took the win. Fantastic for him. Perez in second. This was a really strong showing for the B drivers because I think everyone's been focusing on Verstappen and Leclerc. I don't think Perez and Sainz are actually that far behind in the championship. I haven't looked at the championship standings yet. I'll probably do it after this video, which is the wrong way around, and I should talk about the championship. But I'm pretty sure it's all pretty close between all four drivers because. Leclerc and Verstappen have had bad luck and at times Perez and Sainz have outscored them I know Sainz has had his bad luck as well but he's pretty much up there another third place for Hamilton as well it probably keeps him in the fight for third I still don't think he'll win the championship I think that's going to be a really difficult task unless Mercedes makes some massive improvements but I think it is between Leclerc and Verstappen still it's interesting to watch how much their teammates take out of them because if Perez is white up with Verstappen, it can't really justify Red Bull favouring Verstappen over Perez. And behind the main four, so you had um, Sainz, Perez, Hamilton and Fair in the top four. Alonso, another fantastic performance. Um, I still think he should retire because I don't think he needs to be there really. 
but when he he was running really well in Canada and you got a fifth place here brilliant drive Norris as well unlucky not to be fifth I think he did a great job I think he it was a strategy call I think he didn't pit straight away he pitted a bit later and Alonso caught him so he should have been fifth but it's still a really good drive from him challenging Hamilton at a couple of points Behind hit them, Verstappen managed to bring it home in 7th with Mick Schumacher right on his tail. Schumi finally gets his first Formula 1 points and an 8th place challenging last year's champion. It's a great performance from him. Um, Verstappen will be disappointed but it's probably damage control. And whatever was wrong with his car they need to sort out. And make, I mean that's a lot of performance he lost. Uh, Vettel got a great finish in ninth as well because Aston Martin have not looked on the pace really for the last few races. They were out in Q1 and Vettel did a really good job getting up into the points although get helped by the amount of non-finishers. Same with Magnussen. Haas seems to have lost a little bit of pace relative to the start of the year but Magnussen is a solid hand and he's scoring points here and there. So a 10th place finish, he'll be disappointed to be behind his teammate, but I'm sure he'll be happy for him because they're obviously not fighting for massive prizes. So as long as he, they stay out of each other's way, if they're scoring points, they'll both be happy. Um, the four drivers who actually survived the race, but not in the points. Lance Stroll, who I honestly think if he wasn't the billionaire owner's son, would have been replaced a couple of years ago because he is really uninspiring at the moment. Latifi probably should have scored points. He, so it was a good performance from him, but it's not really good enough at this point. He's too much of a letdown. Um, I think this will be his last year. Same goes for Ricardo. He had a little bit of a bump up in performance in Canada, but it did not extend to this race. And 13th, and you barely saw him. It's not like he was challenging for places. He was just slow. Sonoda, he had too many incidents. He crashed into his teammate. Sonoda's another one I would say is in danger of being replaced because Red Bull have a lot of good drivers. I mean, I they could call up Jehan de Ruvula and probably have about the same level of skill as Sonoda. So I do think Sonoda needs to improve because I haven't been overly impressed by him this year. And crashing into your teammate and getting a five second penalty is not the way to impress. Everyone else who retired, Ocon was driving well, but not, I think he was on the edge of the points. Bottas was on the edge of the points. They may have been scorers. George Russell would have probably scored in the points. And Guan Yu Zhou, honestly, he looked quick. He qualified ahead of his teammate. I think that was a big loss for him. Albon, probably not so much. This was a big turning point for Ferrari. They've ended Red Bull's run of, was it six wins? Possibly, yeah, six wins. That's the kind of momentum they need, and it's going to make Austria a really interesting race. If they can keep that up, really start putting pressure on the Red Bulls. I think it's pretty close between Perez, Leclerc, and Sainz in the championship. don't think Russell's too far behind them either, but I think Verstappen will still have quite a lead. But if the momentum is changing and Ferrari can string a few really good results together, it's going to tighten all the way back up again. And Mercedes, if they are catching up, could make it a three-way fight. The end of this year could be pretty exciting. And I am looking forward to Austria next weekend. It's one of my favourite tracks on the calendar. Despite being one of the more understated ones really. It's going to be interesting. And the midfield as well. I think McLaren, I mean in the hands of Norris, have picked up. And we're going to have more battles with the Alpines who are doing pretty well this year. A lot of drivers fighting for survival as well. And fighting for their careers. There's a lot of intrigue this year, in 2022. I still think there's far too many races, but I will live with it. So this was a very tired review of the British Grand Prix. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and have a good one.